Hey everybody, it is Coach Malcolm here, and today uh, the lesson that I'm going to be teaching is about pins, but more, you know, a larger scale than that. It's going to be about how we use um, our pins to create checkmates. So we're going to be starting off with some checkmate and ones that incorporate pins as, you know, the key part of what allows it to be a checkmate. And the checkmate and ones are going to get, you know, progressively uh, just a little bit harder, and we're going to end it off with um, some relatively challenging uh, mate and twos. But uh, stick with it um, because pins are incredibly important to the game and checkmates are even more important. So before we get started, review never hurts. So let's just remind ourselves what a pin is, okay? So this is just a random game that I've played out for us just to demonstrate what a pin is. So here, this knight on f6 is pinned because if this knight chose to move, let's say black chose to play, knight takes e4 here. Black, sorry, white would be able to take the much more valuable piece, the queen on d8. So this is what we call a relative pin, right? There's a piece um, of much lower value. The knight is worth three and the queen is worth nine situated behind um, the knight on f6. And it's a relative pin because technically this knight is allowed to move. You know, this knight has a lot of different squares. But if it did, uh, white would get a massive advantage by taking on d8. So relative pin, boom, we got it. Now, let's just say, you know, this would not happen in a game, I hope. But if white played a move like king e7, now black, sorry, black plays a move like king e7, white plays knight f3. Now black has put themselves into what is called uh, an absolute pin, right? And that means that literally they absolutely cannot move this knight on f6 anymore. You know, if I try it, the computer uh, and the system will just not let me do that whatsoever. Because, you know, we all know, according to chess rules, uh, you cannot purposefully put yourself into check. So, relative pin is when we have a lower value piece um, pinned to a higher value piece. So, that lower value piece really is not going to move in almost every case because you don't want to lose material. And then, let's go right back here. Here, we have an absolute pin where a piece is pinned and the king is situated behind it and it has no chance whatsoever of moving because the rules of chess simply don't allow it. So, we've reviewed our pin. Let's get right into it. Chapter 1. All right, it's like a book. Where is our checkmate in one? So three things you can do here in these positions to um, better understand them is identify the pin or pins because some of these are going to have multiple pins. This one only has one, but fine. Identify the pins in the position. Are they relative pins? Are they absolute pins? And then how can we utilize those pins to make our checkmate? So take a second or two. I'll, you know, take a second too. Um, and like always, if you need to pause the video, feel free to um, try and solve this puzzle right now. I'll give you a second. All right. Hopefully we found that our vulnerable pinned piece is this pawn on h7. While it can move to h6 and h5, it is unable to move anywhere off um, of the h file because of our rook, right? Our rook on h3 is pinning that pawn to the king. And if you said absolute pin, you're absolutely correct because that is a king indeed on h8. So how can we use the fact that this pawn in particular can't capture on g6 if a piece is there? We're going to play knight to g6, right? The pawn is not able to take back, and this king is trapped in the corner um, by his own pieces as well. That's unfortunate for him. Uh, all right, let's continue. Our next puzzle, a little similar, but we got a little bit of a, you know, we're spicing it up a little bit. So take a second or two. Um... Figure out the pin. Again, figure out the pin. Absolute or relative. How can we use it to our advantage to make a checkmate? All right. So hopefully we found that our special piece in this position is our bishop on c3, pinning that pawn on g7. Again, we have another absolute pin. That pawn absolutely has no chance at moving. It is not allowed to do that. Black, um, uh, black is in trouble then. So why? Why is black in trouble? What are we going to play here? Rook takes h6 will be checkmate in one, right? This pawn cannot take back. Again, the system is not letting me because our bishop on c3 is doing just such a wonderful job. And again, this king is, you know, trapped in by his own pieces, but our rook also does a really good job uh, covering those squares and putting him in check. All right. Next up, we have another checkmate in one. So we can see, you know, we're adding just a little more layers to the problem. We got a few more pieces on the board. Uh, more pieces in this position are playing a important role. So same process, same three steps. Uh, take a second or two and let me know how we can checkmate here for white. 
All right, the key in this position, hopefully we figured out, is these two bishops, right? These two bishops are pointed directly at that king. Now, while this bishop on b2 is not, you know, creating a pin, he is covering a ton of squares. And let's notice, all these squares are already covered, right? The king, uh, the rook and the pawn are trapping the king in. I guess we can say g7 isn't covered yet. We need to put that king in check. But this bishop is doing a great job taking the open dark squares um, in black's position. And then this bishop on b3 is our pinning piece. This Bishop is pinning this pawn on f7, which makes this pawn on g6 particularly, particularly vulnerable because it is actually free. And not only is it free, but queen takes g6, taking that pawn is checkmate. All right. Again, our bishop does a great job guarding these two squares. Our queen attacks the king, um, guards h7, and then, whoopsies, I'm getting way too many arrows in this position. Sorry about this, guys. And then, again, our bishop does a stellar job. Um, making this queen uh, safe and unable to be captured on g6 because the pawn just unfortunately cannot capture. And that's the way pins work. Super strong. All right. Chapter four of our book. We're going to be looking at just a very quick game. Um, let me uh, just explain for a second. This game is a pretty famous game. I've had this game played on some of my games. Um, I've reviewed this game in particular in one of my other lessons, but it's still relevant because uh, we've got our pins um, going on. So let's take a quick look. E4, C6, D4, D5. This is the Carol Khan defense for black. Uh, pawn takes E4, knight takes E4, knight D7, queen E2, setting up our secret pin. Knight F6, take a second, see if you can find our super awesome smother mate using a smother, a pin, and a checkmate in one. Um, and yeah. All right, hopefully we found we don't actually, you know, what's a little weird about this position is we don't have our pin right away. But once we play knight d6, we find out this pawn on e7 is again in an absolute pin uh, with the king being behind it. And that pawn is pinned by the queen. So it cannot take on d6. No piece, other piece is attacking this knight on d6. And unfortunately, not this knight on f6. Unfortunately for this black king on e8, every single one of his pieces is helping to checkmate him. So... That's our smother mate and our pin and our checkmate in one. All right. Next up. This is kind of similar to the last one, but what I want to notice about this one is we've got a lot more pins going on. So take a second. Uh, just take a little more time. You may see the checkmate, but I also want you to try and notice. I believe we have three pins um, all, you know, helping out with our checkmate in this position. So let's try and find those. All right. So. Our first pin I notice is this queen on b4 has an absolute pin um, with this queen on d6. And yeah, you're absolutely right if you're saying, you know, well, the queen can just take on b4. First of all, it's white to move. And second of all, this pin is still useful because it means all these other squares that this queen would love to go to, right? The queen has so many options. All these other squares, she is not allowed to go to them because she cannot move um, off this diagonal that she is pinned on. Our second pin is this pawn on e6. While again, it can move up, it is not able to do any captures if pieces decided to go to d5 or f5 because of our wonderful rook on e1. And our third pin is our bishop on g5. This looks very similar to our intro position where we were talking about a pin. This knight is absolutely pinned. It cannot move anywhere um, because of our wonderful bishop on g5. So, and then let's just notice, you know, just to include our rook so he doesn't feel left out, our rook is doing a great job covering some key squares. Uh, for this king. So where is our checkmate in one for white? Hopefully you found knight d5. The queen can't take on d5 because she's pinned. The pawn can't take on d5 because she's pinned. And the knight cannot take on d5 um, because the knight is pinned as well. So we use all three of these pins. The knight is attacking the king. And then, you know, again, it's all about acknowledging uh, the hard work of our rook. He's covering those back rank squares. Um, and this is indeed checkmate. All right, next up, this is our last mate in one position. Uh, a little funkier, we're going to be using, uh, you know, not a different idea, I would say. There's still some pins going on in this position. We're going to be using some different pieces, though. So take a second or two and find that checkmate in one. All right, hopefully we see the key pin in this position is this pawn on e7 with our rook. Pinning it from h7, that pawn cannot move at all because the king is right behind it on c7. So here, super tricky, pawn d6 checkmate. I absolutely love pawn checkmates. I think they're super cool. 
Our, both our knight and our pawn cover this escape square on b6. Our bishop does a sorry, not that square. Our bishop does a great job covering d6, uh, d7, and c8. And then we are we not we don't even have to support this pawn. We have to support it with our pawn here. We have a ton of support on the pawn. Whatever that doesn't matter. The point is this pawn on e7 cannot take back because of our awesome pin. All right, so this position is a little funky. So let me explain. It is a mate in two that utilizes a pin for white if black um, does not play their best move. So we're going to look at how it's a mate in two. Um, for white, we're going to look at if black played their best moves possible, how it is still a completely winning position for white. So regardless, if that didn't make any sense to you, just think about it like this. We have an awesome pin that we can use in this position to win a ton of material and maybe even checkmate against black. So take a second or two, try and find this super cool pin. All right, so it's tricky, right? Because it looks like our queen is hanging if we just play a move like a3. Sorry, h3. It looks like, oh, this was our queen. But we actually are secretly pinning this queen on this diagonal to the king on g8. And how are we going to use that? We are going to play rook to e1, which also looks like a super crazy move. Why can't this queen just take on e1? Checkmate. And that is because, right, we have this super, super awesome pin. Uh, the queen is not allowed to take on e1. So you might be saying, you know, Coach Malcolm, you know, rook e1 is a pretty cool move. That's pretty cool. Queen takes e1 is in checkmate. But we're just going to take on c4. We're going to lose our queen. But here is where our checkmate in two comes in place. So rook takes e8 in this position is going to be checkmate because the queen moves away from guarding that rook on e8. And this king is in a, I guess we call it a pseudo back rank checkmate but it is a back rank checkmate that rook covers the back rank and there's no way for that queen on c4 to get in the way and stop it so like i was saying you know queen takes c4 is not the best move here uh so if black plays best moves it's probably i think it's something like b5 attacking that queen on c4 but we're just going to get to take on e6 again they can't take our queen because we have this checkmate on e8 so uh maybe they'll play something like king f8 but at the end of the day uh we're going to just be up a whole queen here and this is not going to be a super hard game to finish off. All right, so here we have our final puzzle. Um, this one's a little funky. This one is uh, a concrete, a stable mate in two. There is no way for black to get around it. It is completely forced. So let's take our five seconds or pause your videos if you need it. Find those pins. Um, we're going to actually have to make some pins in this position. It's a little tricky, so take a second and also... For this position, it's important to look at what squares around the king are covered and what squares need to be covered in order for us to make our checkmate in two work. So take a second or two and look at that. All right. Hopefully here, the first pen that I notice is this queen on c5. So similar to some of our other puzzles, while of course if it was black to move, that queen could take on a3. But like we said, this queen has no longer has the ability to move to any of the squares that she would have previously liked. She has to stay on this diagonal because she's pinned. There's a king on d6 right behind. You can't move out of the way and have that king be in check. Um, in terms of looking at some squares, the knight on g8 uh, is doing a good job covering e7. A lot of black's pieces seem to be blocking him in a little bit, but we have some key squares that we need to cover, uh, like d6. We have to put him in check, of course, to make a checkmate and c6 as well sorry c6 as well so uh the important thing to notice is this rook on h6 so both of these pieces are in the way so you're correct if you're saying you know it's not a pin yet but we can make both of these pieces into a pin depending on how black plays so if you found our main two you found that our starting move is pawn to e5 now our bishop on g2 is being incredibly useful guarding some of these escape squares we were talking about before, particularly c6. And then, uh, obviously, we're putting the king in check, so we're guarding d6, attacking d6. And let's say black decides to take... Uh, remember, they can't take with their queen because of our awesome pin. Uh, so let's say black decides to take... Bishop takes e5. Now this rook is pinned, right? This rook cannot move anywhere on the e-file. So once we play, pawn takes e5. D takes e5, that is checkmate. The rook cannot take. Uh, the bishop guards these key squares. Let's see. The knight guards e7. The queen is forced.
forced to stay on stay put you know on this c5 square um again just because of our super useful pin and here we have you know this king is in checkmate unfortunately for him so let's just go back one second because um maybe you're thinking you know coach malcolm uh black could also play rook takes e5 here to take that pawn but now this bishop on f6 is pinned and after pawn takes e5 that bishop can't take on e5 that queen can't take on e5 and now our knight is actually helping out as well, guarding that e6 escape square. And here again, d takes e5 is checkmate. All right, that was our last puzzle. I hope that this was useful. Um, you know, just pins are uh, just consistently uh, very, very useful, whether it is taking control of your opponent's pieces, whether it is winning material, or whether in this case, uh, it is just absolutely obliterating, obliterating your opponents and winning the game. So every game, make sure you're looking for those pins, um, taking advantage of those situations. Um, and I hope to see you guys use them in your games. So, all right, guys. Thank you, and I will see you soon.